from the car again, the internet. Don't worry, I'm on an abandoned country road, otherwise known as Highway 661, so it's good, I think, mostly. We'll find out. Today is uh, September 13th, which means it's time for day 13 of the Teach Thought Reflective Teacher Vlog, where I apparently never look at the camera because I'm looking road in my mirrors. Also, you should know, if it looks like I'm looking at you in the camera, I'm not. I'm checking my speed like a good safe driver does all the time. Today's prompt is I'm supposed to talk about uh, ed tech tools that I use in my classroom and rank them in order of importance. The tools in order of importance. Number one, definitely uh, my computer. I have a computer in my classroom hooked up to a uh, like video projector. That thing gets used like all the time, even if I'm not like lecturing, uh, for lecturing, though it is pretty cool because I have it projecting onto whiteboards, and so uh, I don't have a smart board in my room, but I have the whiteboards, and so I call it my dumb board because it's drawn it with markers, and actually the precision of that is actually way better than a smart board or any other like magic pen type system that I've ever played around with. It is kind of a pain to have to erase it all the time though. And uh, Number two, uh, we have like 10 iPads on an iPad like little cart thing that we share for the whole school. Uh, I know, the, the, it's a lot of the one-to-one -one people are probably scoffing horrendously at that, but it's what we have so that's what I can use. And that's nice because then, you know, if I split them up into groups, even if it's like partnerships, pretty much everybody can have an iPad, but I also have a, we have a netbook card, has like 20 netbooks on it, that our uh, district has managed to turn into 20 like really pretty looking paperweights, so those don't get a whole lot of use unless I specifically need like office, or like, yeah, I think I have like one lab that relies on those. Um, also, we just got four Chromebook cards, so those are probably going to get used a lot more, too. That's probably of equal value with the uh, iPads. But like I said in an earlier video, I've got bring-your-own-device stuff going on. So my kids can pretty much bring in their toys, and really I just use the school's toys to augment for the kids who, you know, don't have, because even though it seems like they all have it, I do still have some students that do not have... Uh, you know, smartphones or tablets of their own. Number three, we have these really cool uh, computers that we got as a part of a distance tutoring program. It's really neat. So the, the room setup has a really huge smart board in it and it has, um, it has like an Elmo document camera, which is pretty awesome because I can stick like pictures or maps or stuff under there if I need like more precision than what the smart board could offer me. Uh, it also has these really nice um, computers in there with a lot of video editing software. It's got Camtasia, it has Adobe Premiere Pro, which is incredible. Uh, kind of a little bit of a learning curve compared to Camtasia, but it's really a powerful system. And what else is in that room? I use a little flip cam, which is actually what I'm recording this on, so it records me in front of the smart board, and then I use Camtasia to record what's behind me, so that's really useful, and we actually use that to tutor in math and science with students from OSU, so the kids can, like, sit in there, they can put their homework under the document camera, it goes up on the smart board, and then the student and the tutoring student down at OSU can actually work on that stuff together. So that's kind of a pretty cool application, and then I use it to record most of my flip class videos. The ones that aren't done in there, I do at home with a, well, you saw how good my webcam is, so there's that. So that was three, all the flip class technology, I think, I think I mentioned everything. Yep, all right, number four, I guess it's not really like technology as far as like tools or whatever, but I consider it a tool even though it's more like software and social media, specifically Twitter. I use Twitter for a ton of stuff. I actually made a separate screen name of Twitter just for my students and I to interact on. And actually, that's where the homework hotline goes. I tweet out all the homework. Sometimes I'll have kids tweet it out. I have set hashtags like BioHWHL for homework hotline. It's for biology and then LSHWHL for my life science classes. And then uh, if I have oceanography, OCEHWHL. And uh, meteorology, I accidentally spelled meth, so I had to take that one off the sign. That was bad. I embedded the... Um, 
the hashtag display like on my website and on our Moodle and other places so it, it all goes right there and the kids can see it and it also is nice so kids if they um, if they choose to they can you know follow me and they can text if they don't have Twitter from like, to number 4044 and then they get text alerts every time I tweet or they can follow me on Twitter and you know it'll buzz at them every time so that's really useful it's also good uh, if, if you didn't realize, you know, the first post on this channel was like 40 minutes about all the things that we do with social media and how we use it. So, yeah, that's, it's a big deal for me, so I won't get too much more into that because it's all, it's all in that from uh, Seco14 anyway. Number five, uh, Google Hangout. Like I said, I have a webcam. Uh, sometimes I roll those computers down to my room from the tutoring room, use it for like a little distance teaching. Like there's been some times that I've been absent, so I'll do Google Hangout so I can get in there anyway. Or with Skype, um, it's nice to do those uh, with, uh, I have a couple of friends of mine who are scientists in the field that will Skype in with me. So it's nice to set those up and do like a little, uh, you know, guest speaker distance style for the kids. I'm actually thinking about going to um, the National Association of Biology Teachers Conference is in it's in northern Ohio this year, which is awesome. Or maybe it was down in Cincy. It's in Ohio anyway, so I definitely want to go, but it's right during our teacher conferences, parent-teacher conference, so I actually thought about setting up one of those systems in there so they could Skype in with me or Google Hangout in with me for a little parent-teacher conference action. Uh, we'll see. I guess six, the webcams in there is pretty useful. And then number seven, the school got all the teachers' Chromebooks. We're piloting them out to see if we want to get all the kids' Chromebooks to do a little one-to-one with some race to the top funds. I won't talk any more about that because I will have to censor myself exorbitantly. <laughs> but it's it's convenient for me. Uh, it is nice to have that since I don't really I don't actually have a laptop or a tablet or anything. So it is convenient to lug around and when I go to this or that room since a lot of my job is putting things in on websites. So those are the ed tech tools that I use in what I'm sure is the longest and rambliest blog vlog yet so you're welcome for that what things do you think i'm missing out on what toys should i be bringing to the classroom that i was like oh i really you know want to get in there those lists that was an order of importance to me and so see you later the internet thanks for watching comments and video responses put them down there